The key to using programming instructionally with pre-reading students is to make it a seamless part of the lesson, the center of the experience, so kind of the, the context for the lesson. You really think about it more of a digital learning experience for the student to engage in. With that in mind, let's take a look at Scratch Junior and see how we design a digital learning experience. When we open up Scratch Junior to start a new project, we can see this screen and we've got this plus sign. So we're going to hit it and that's going to open what is essentially our blank canvas on Scratch Junior. Before you even get to this canvas, you should have a clear sense of what your lesson objectives are so that you can design the learning experience to meet those objectives. What you're going to do as a teacher is you're going to build some of what the student is going to need here and it hopefully will be enough that the student can complete the work and it will guide the student in their work. To think of a related idea, consider a worksheet with questions written on it and blanks left in that the students fill in. This, with all hope, will be much more active than that. But to start with, you really think about what are the learning objectives we want to meet and how can we meet those in this structure. Um, you also need to think about how the students are going to do this work. Is it going to be shared, meaning you have two students working on one iPad, or will it be paired where students are working on their own work but will be working side by side so that if they need to discuss what they're doing with someone, they have an immediate partner to discuss that with. When you start designing the experience, you have to know how you can have different places or scenes or pages the students can use. And all of that is right over here on the right. If I can see that this number one box is highlighted, that's background or scene one. I'm going to actually insert a background of that to make it a little easier to uh, tell the difference between them. So we're going to choose this one. And then I can add another background. And you can create up to or add up to four backgrounds. This means that you can have four scenes the students construct. You could have four levels of a game that they interact with. You could have four pages of a book. Um, you could have four individual questions. And you could preload each of these with that question. You could even use an existing worksheet and simply take a picture of it or the, take a picture of the relevant part of it and use that as the background. Um, with each of these, you want to think purposefully about, okay, what are these divisions? What do they mean? And you're going to want to set up the structure that will allow students to get from one page to the next. And once you have the pages set up, under this red tab, you can see the two, three, like the two, the three, and the four. And those triggers switch the scene to scenes two, three, or four. Now, you probably wouldn't have each of these on one page, but you could, for example, create a next button, and the code of that next button could be that when it is touched, we switch to scene two. We're going to put that next button right down there. And on the next page, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add that next button. And we're going to give it the code that when it's touched, we're going to switch to scene three. And down here in scene four, we're going to add the next button. And we're going to give it the code that when it is touched, we will switch to scene four. So now, if I'm up here at the beginning, 
and I start my show, and I click that next button. Oh, wait, I'm in scene four already. Click that next button, it moves me ahead. Nope, that one didn't work. I have to edit. So, you have to build the basic structure that'll help the students navigate through what you're doing, but try not to build too much of it so there's a lot of coding left for them to explore and meet their own goals with. With these simple principles, you can design learning experiences that are anything from a story that the students compose and tell, which could work very nicely with Writer's Workshop that has a beginning, a middle, and an ending. You could also create simple math exercises involving, you know, monkeys and number lines. Or you could create a spelling activity where the students have to spell the names of different classmates and unscramble them. They could also be sight words. The possibilities might not be limitless, technically, but there's a lot of them, and I know I haven't thought of nearly enough of them yet, so we'll keep working on that together. Looking forward to talking to you next time.